Okay, so this is a very cool video about well integrity and good zonal isolation video. It's provided by the American government on a royalty free basis, as far as I'm aware. And uh, we're talking about how if you drilled, if you live next to this fracking site, what would happen to your water? Why can you set your taps on fire? And we're going to talk about gas migration. We're going to talk about biogenic methane that is surface methane that's here, could uh, that's already there and existing in freshwater aquifer zone. And you've got the lower down where you do the actual fracking, and the um, thermogenic is down at the bottom fracking site. I would imagine that it's uh, that this biogenic methane it's lying dormant at the bottom of the freshwater aquifer in the, in the in the well, and it, all the chucks coming along plus the drilling process itself and the actual fracking process, these three things are all going to shake up the ground. You're going to have shock waves coming from the fracking and you're going to have shock waves coming from the drilling and you're going to have um, shaking of the ground from the trucks. These are all going to shake up the gas that's existing in the freshwater aquifer. And this is the gas that is released, the biogenic methane, and comes out of the taps in, on fire. And I, I liken it to if the fracking um, layer is a great big coke bottle that's being shook up for its gas, then up here in the freshwater aquifer zone, there is going to be a smaller coke can, and that is the biogenic methane, that is the bubbles that are just around the edges of the well. And if you shake up the big coke bottle, you're going to end up also shaking the small coke can both of which are going to release, release gas. One is going to release it up the tube where hopefully it doesn't uh, break through and on the other side it, by the aquifer um, it's going to release the biogenic methane into people's houses that live nearby and cause problems. In one of which is being able to set your um, tap water on fire. Another problem, potential problem that's going to be covered in this video is the possibility for well casing failure. And uh, yes, I would refer you to Dr. Ingraffia's work on well casing failure. Over time, he has predicted all of them will fail. 50 years to 100 years, all the casings will fail. It's just a question of the failure rate. How many years, how many fail? You can slow down the process by constant maintenance and redoing the seals, but there are problems with orphaned wells where people just leave them, cap them and leave them, and then you get gas build up from extra gas and this can cause explosions. So yes, please refer to Dr. Ingraffi's work. This is a really nice animation from Southwestern Energy. Um, it shows what you like to see. You've, you've drilled the well into the target formation down at the bottom there, the Marcellus Shale in our case. Uh, you've isolated that well with multiple strings of steel casing and cement and we're producing red gas bubbles, in this case, um, from the Marcellus flowing up to the, uh, to the surface. You notice that there's two formations that are above the Marcellus that also contain uh, gas, shown by the little red circles. And that's a very common occurrence in Pennsylvania. It's not just the Marcellus shale that has gas, but there's lots of layered shales above the Marcellus, and some sandstones too, that naturally contain small amounts of, of natural gas. And in drilling for the Marcellus shale, the operators have to drill through those uh, shallower gas producing units. Sometimes, and what they want to do is seal those off so that those small amounts of gas can't escape and uh, contaminate the, the environment. Here's an example of some, how that contamination could happen if the cement job on the well is not done properly in this case, in the, in the circular insert, you can see uh, an illustration, a cartoon showing that the cement has not bonded properly to the rock. And that allows some of the gas to seep out of that shallow producing zone, move up the annulus of the well between the two casing strings that have not, has not been cemented, and then find its way out into the environment and maybe contaminate some fresh water. So the industry tries hard to prevent this, this is uh, what we call stray gas, and it's one way that uh, gas can uh, get into the environment. It's not the only way, um, but a lot of the cases of, of gas migration that you hear about and are blamed on hydraulic fracturing are more likely caused by this kind of 
well construction model. Um, so all of these issues I've talked about, uh, uh, people are asking, what's the cumulative impact?